Hey everybody, welcome back to Technically Speaking with Hank Preston. I'm your host, Hank Preston. And in today's episode, we're gonna take a look at IPsec VPN tunnel creation or tunnel standup. Uh, in this case, I'm not referring to how we configure IPsec VPNs. No, once they're configured, what does the process look like as that tunnel comes up between two endpoints? You may have heard terms like phase one and phase two, or protocols like ISACAMP, Ike, ESP, IPsec. So in this video, I wanted to take a kind of a technical look at the tunnel creation process so that we can break down those terms so that you can see what exactly is meant by all of them. We're gonna do this using Cisco Modeling Labs, as well as take a look at the actual packets using Wireshark and the packet capture capability built directly into CML. All right, let's dive right in. So in order to actually bring up a VPN between a couple of sites, we need a network and a couple of sites. And so I built a fairly straightforward two-site network here, uh, and I've whiteboarded it out so we can take a look at it. And then we'll see this in CML itself. So in this topology, we do have two sites. We have a site one and we have a site two. Each one of these sites has a couple of networks, or site one has two networks. It has the yellow network with host one on it, and it has the blue network with a host two on it. And then site two has two, or two hosts, both in the purple network. Now, each of these sites is protected from the WAN by a firewall. Those firewalls are performing the normal firewall duties of NAD and ACLs. And so as traffic progresses out from site one through the firewall, it will be NADed to some sort of a public address. And then there are ACLs limiting what traffic is allowed in and out. Fairly typical, straightforward configuration setup. Now what our goal is, our goal is to go ahead and actually create a VPN connection between the site one and site two firewalls so that we have the ability to tunnel over the WAN between these sites in a secure IPsec VPN. So that's the goal, that's what we wanna build out on this. But as we're gonna see, a VPN connection is more, than is more complicated than just a single connection between the two gateways. We actually build a collection of security associations that perform different aspects of this process. All right, let's see this in action inside of CML. All right, here we are with Cisco Modeling Labs for that same network we looked at the whiteboard. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use this to explore that IPsec VPN bring up. We're gonna start out here on the site one firewall and we will verify that we don't currently have a VPN connection up and active. So show crypto isocamp SA. And we can see that we have neither V1 or V2 SAs. And those are Ike uh, SAs. That's the identity key exchange protocol. And that's how we actually negotiate secure keys for the communication. Now, before we bring up the interesting traffic, let's go ahead and start a packet capture so we'll be able to watch the actual packets that initiate this connection. And we'll do that here on the outside interface from the firewall. We can see underneath the settings for the packet capture, I'm limiting it just to ISACAMP or UDP port 500 or ESP IP protocol 50. ESP is the actual IPsec protocol used for the data encryption. And so we've got that set up. We'll go ahead and we'll say start and kick off our packet capture. Now with that packet capture going, I can jump over here to host one and we can start, we can send a ping packet out. In fact, we're gonna send five ping packets of 100 bytes in size. Now as they finish, notice that we sent five packets, but we only received four of them. And that's because the first packet was lost during the actual ISACAMP tunnel bring up. But the last four were able to make it across. Now, now that we've got the tunnel up, let's go ahead and stop our packet capture. And we'll look at the actual packets in a moment here. But first, I want to take a look at the status on the firewall. So back on the firewall, if I do a show crypto ISACAMP SA once more, we can see now I have a V2 Ike SA. Now right here, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight what we would refer to as the phase one portion of this tunnel. 
The phase one portion is the ISACAMP portion where we leverage Ike to go ahead and actually negotiate a control channel as well as the security keys necessary for doing the encryption of the data traffic. Now we can see inside of the phase one, underneath auth, auth sign PSK and auth verify PSK, what that tells me is that I'm using pre-shared keys to authenticate the two ends of the tunnel. Now I used to think that the pre-shared key was actually used to do the encryption itself, but it's not. It's simply used to authenticate the two ends of the tunnel. The encryption is done by keys that are negotiated during the phase one setup by Diffie-Hellman. And that's what the DH group refers to. DH group 14 says we're gonna use the group 14, it's a high security version of Diffie-Hellman to negotiate keys back and forth. The other services that are important to negotiate during phase one setup is what hashing are we going to use? In this case, SHA-256. And then lastly, what encryption? AES-256. Uh, and so we can see right there inside of what I've highlighted, all of the details for phase one in addition to the two firewall outside addresses, the local and the remote addresses. Now phase one implies maybe a phase two. If you've heard phase two before, we can see the first hints of it here underneath this child SA. Now what the SA is in these cases is security association. Now we often refer to VPNs as tunnels or an IPsec tunnel. What we actually are creating a is a collection of security associations between the two different endpoints. And in this case, the child SA is the phase two security association. And that's where the actual data can be data can be sent across. We can see the local selector and the remote selector. Those identify the interesting traffic. The local selector comes from my site one host one. It's on the yellow network. The remote selector comes from site two uh, host one up here at the top. That's the purple network. And those are identified by an access control list. We can see the specifics of that ACL. If I do a show crypto IPsec SA, now we can see here at the top of this output, we can see access list. We can see the name of the ACL. And this is the specific line that was the interesting traffic triggered by my ping packets. We can see again the local identity and remote identities. Those are negotiated between the two firewalls or the two gateway devices that are building this VPN connection. We can see underneath the statistics, packets incapped and decapped right here as four. We sent five packets, but the first one didn't make it across. So it's just the last four packets that made it through. If we continue down to the end here, we can see the actual, what this SA is, is it's actually a collection. It's a set of two SAs, an inbound SA, as I've uh, highlighted, and then right below it, we can see the outbound SA. Because these security associations, these tunnels, are actually one way. So we have a SA, an inbound SA, that allows traffic to come into the gateway, and then we have an outbound SA that allows the return traffic to go back through. So it's two SAs actually make up a bi-directional tunnel that's in place. The other thing that's interesting to see here is this SPI value. This is the index. This is the identifier that allows the traffic from one security gateway to match the SA on the other one because the SPIs are the index, how we connect them together. Now we've seen it up here on the firewall. Let's go ahead and download that packet capture and see the packets that were involved. There we go. So if I click download, it'll download my PCAP file. I'll double click that. We open it up here in Wireshark. And if what we can notice here is the first thing I want you to notice is under these protocol columns, how we see ISACAMP and then we see ESP and then we see more ISACAMP. And those indicate, again, the phase one and the phase two portions. Up here at the top, these four packets are that phase one, the establishment of the control channel. Then we have our ESP packets. That's phase two, actually sending data across. Now we sent four ICMP ping packets, and then we got four replies. And that's what these eight ESP packets are. This was an echo request, and then an echo reply. Echo request, echo reply, request reply, request reply. So those are the four packets that actually made it across our tunnel. 
and we see the SPI values. So let's look at one of these. We've got four, uh, C45D. If I go back and we look at our output on the firewall, right here, C45D. So that is the outbound SPI. So we can actually see inside of the packets the value because that value, it's unencrypted. It's required to match the SPIs, the security associations between the two gateways. We can see that in the packets themselves. Back in our packets up here in phase one, if I grab this first ISACAMP packet and then we take a look, I'll make this a little bigger here, and we take a look at the ISACAMP portion of the packet, we can look underneath the security association payload and we can start to see elements of the actual negotiation. And so here we can see where the encryption algorithm has been identified and negotiated, AES-256. I go down a little bit farther, we can see here we've got the hashing algorithm, SHA-256. And then below that, Diffie-Hellman Group, 14. We can see all of those elements that are part of the actual negotiation of bringing up the phase one and the phase two SAs, all included in the packets. Now we've got our first bit of interesting traffic. Let's see what happens when we send additional traffic from a different host, from the blue network instead of the yellow. So that'll be here over host two. And so if I go ahead and we say, we wanna send our ping packet from here, we're gonna send once more five packets and we're gonna send them in this case up to site two host two, just a different IP address. Just like the first time we sent five packets, but only four were received because even though this has got a tunnel connection, the ISACAMP and the ESP, the phase one, phase two tunnels that have been established were simply for the one part of interesting traffic, that one ACL. In this case, it's a different ACL that's triggered here. So now when I come back over, we take a look at our firewall. If I do a show ISACAMP SA, show ISACAMP SA, we can see now we have a second child SA that has been created. So here's the first one. This is the one from before. That was our uh, host one traffic. But now we have a second child SA that was added to the existing kind of security association phase one tunnel. Now, if we look at the tunnel ID here, this is tunnel ID, it ends in uh, 66611. If I scroll up just a little bit to where we saw the last one, oops, where is it? Here we go. We can see that it's again, ends in 66611. So it's the same phase one tunnel, we've just added an additional child SA. The difference is the local and remote selector combination. Now, instead of 192.168.100, it's 192.168.200. And if I do a show crypto IPsec SA, we can see that we have, if I get down to it, there it is right here, a different accessless line that matches that set of interesting traffic. So now that we've seen the demonstration in action, let's go back to the whiteboard and actually kind of put our thoughts together for what are we actually creating. Now we had said that we wanted to create a tunnel between site one firewall and site two firewall, but we've learned that it's more complicated than that. We're actually creating a collection of security associations. And so we start out again by creating the phase one security association, whoops. By creating the phase one security association, between the two firewalls. And so that's phase one, and that was ISACAMP. Once that's in place, then we can create bi-directional security associations for each set of interesting traffic. And so first we got our security association here. So that was a phase two security association. And then we sent off additional traffic from a different network, which gave us the blue security associations for those. And so what we ended up there was those were our phase two, we'll circle them here, so we've got them, our phase two, and those in this case were based on ESP because we we're doing encapsulating security protocol for this IPsec connection. And so what we've learned 
is that an IPsec tunnel, again, is that collection of security associations that are negotiated using the ISACAMP and IC protocols, and then building those phase two with ESP, or if you were doing an authentication header, an AH tunnel. And that's about it for this look at IPsec VPN standup. Hopefully this video and discussion has made it a little clear exactly what's happening under the hood as you're working with IPsec VPNs. I've always found that that's really important, particularly when you're first trying to bring up a connection that may not come up immediately, or if you're trying to troubleshoot a connection, trying to understand is a problem in phase one or is it in phase two? Which part of the negotiation isn't working as expected? All right, until next time, thanks again for joining me here on Technically Speaking with Hank Preston.